spectrum to the actual sun transport engineering to CE451. In today's lecture, we will start learning about airport engineering. So, first of all, we will start with some of the terminologies which are in the uh, big traffic point E used in the airport. Uh, so, these are the terms. Uh, we will learn some of these terms which we will use during this uh, subject. And uh, during this topic, that is, first of all, we will start with the aerodrome. So, what we understand from the aerodrome? It is nothing but it is a defined area either on the ground or in the water which includes the building, installations, or the equipments means where. Uh, the, uh, where the flight, where the aircraft may come or it may departure, as well as whatever building we are providing, uh, that is for providing the facilities and uh, for providing the facilities like for parking as well as for repairing the aircraft. So, what we are saying that it is a defined area on the land or the water, which includes the building, the installations, and the equipment, and it is intended for the uh, to be used for the arrival and departure of the aircraft. Yes, we are saying that it may be provided with the facility of shelter or the repair of an airport. This kind of facility may be provided at the, the aerodrome. Right? The next one is the airport. So, what is the airport? Airport, we can say that it is one of the higher goals of the air, uh, aerodrome. So, we define it as an airport is an aerodrome which is principally intended or principally used for the commercial services. It is to be provided to the customer facility if it serves any kind of international traffic, then sir, customer facilities need to be provided. It need to be mandatory, it must, it, it need to be provided to the customer facility if your airport serves any international traffic. Then we have the aircraft. So it is a generally a uh, generalized term which represents any machine uh, which uh, for navigating within the air. Here the term that it may be power driven or it may not be power driven or we say that it may be lighter or it may be heavier than the air. So uh, where as we are saying it may be power driven or it may not be power driven, some of the examples of these kind of flying machines are like uh, the air, airplane flights, then helicopter, uh, then uh, gliders, so these are some of the examples of the aircraft. Then we have the two, uh, we can categorize this aircraft into two categories, that is one is Subsonic aircraft and second one is supersonic aircraft. So, what we are saying aircraft it is generally used to represent what we speak about the flying machines which may be power driven or which may not be power driven as well as they may be the heavier or lighter than air. So, the aircraft are really classified into two categories that is one is subsonic aircraft, another one is supersonic aircraft. These are the aircraft, those have the speed less than the speed of sound. Uh, aircraft which does have the speed greater than the speed of sound. And we generally consider the speed of sound as 1130 kmph. So, this is what the aircraft, as we are saying, it is a machine, flying machine. It may be used for the uh, which may be power driven or may not be power driven, they may be heavier or lighter than the air. These aircraft are generally classified into two categories one is the air subsonic aircraft, and another one is supersonic aircraft. The subsonic aircraft are the aircraft those have the speed less than the speed of sound, as well as the supersonic aircraft are the aircraft those have the speed greater than the speed of sound. And generally, the speed of sound we know that it is almost nearly about. 1130 kmph. Then we have next is aeroplane. So what it? It is a power driven flying machine, which is with the fixed wing, uh, with the fixed wing, as well as it is heavier than the air. As we are seeing, it is one of the examples of aircraft. What is aircraft? It may be power driven or may not be. When the airport airplane is the power driven as well as the second condition that aircraft will be lighter than air. 
This aircraft is heavier than air. So this is one of the type of aircraft as you were saying. So it is a power driven flying machine with the fixed wing which is heavier than the air. Then the next we have the aircraft. What is the aircraft? It is generally defined area to provide in front of the terminals, the gate terminals for the loading and unloading of cargoes, passengers as well as for parking purposes as well as refueling purposes. It is generally paved as well as and located in front of building. So what is the what is the airport? It is the defined area of the airport to accommodate the aircraft for the loading and unloading of cargoes as well as passengers, parking and refueling purposes. It is usually paved generally and generally it is uh, the, the payment what we provide that is the CC payment that we provide. Then we provide a CC payment. The reason is as we are using this airport for the refueling of the aircraft or for the airplane. During the refueling, there may be a spillage or oil spilling or oil spills. If it will be the bituminous payment, then if it is a bituminous payment, then that oil, uh, that bitumen may get dissolved with the oil like petrol and some fuel and there will be a loss of the bituminous mixes. While in case of CC pavement, the oil does not get clear in the concrete pavements or the concrete out of the cement and there will be no problem even though the, there is place of soil so that we will prefer the CC pavement on the aircrafts. Then we have the next one that is the cargo. What it is? It is a general term which is used to indicate the flight, but other than the passengers, passengers and the mail. So it is generally it is carried by flight transport aircrafts. Next is what gate position. It is nothing but the space allotted in front of the terminal for the passing of the aircraft. On the hangar, these are the large streets which are erected at the airport for the purposes of housing, servicing and repairing of aircraft is known as the hangar. Then we have the runway. What it is? It is nothing but the long and comparatively narrow strip which is principally intended for the use of landing and taking operation of the aircraft. By taxi way, it is also a strip which is provided which is uh, provided to get the access from the runway to the terminal area. So for that it is to provide the Taxi way. So these are some of the terminologies. Now we will start with the basics of runway orientation. Okay, we will start dialing from the runways. Right. So here is one point. What are the runway? Runway we have all in hand. What is the runway? It is nothing but the long and compared to the narrow strip which is principally used for landing and takeoff operations of the aircraft, right? So therefore, the point you can remember that the number of runway it depends on the depends on the aircraft. In the how many number of runway we need to provide on the airport is generally depends on the air traffic which is facing the airport, which the airport will face that on that air traffic the number of runway generally depends as well as the orientation of this runway. It depends mainly on the Some of the preliminary data for planning 
the runway for planning the orientation of the runway. So, what are the first of all the preliminary data required for that? Or to say the pre uh, preliminary information, better to speak the preliminary information. So, I will try to some of the preliminary information. What is that? The number one is it requires a map of the area. What are the preliminary information it required? So, I will ask it the map of the area and the visibility of the airport to understand the topography. Understand the topography of the area. We require some of the preliminary information. The first one is we require the map of the area to understand the topography or to say the terrain in that area. So that we require the map of the area in the vicinity of the airport. The second one we want that is the wind data. The second one what we want that is the wind data. This wind data. The three types of data we want that is the number one is direction of wind, then we want the intensity of wind, and then we want the duration of wind. So there are three types of data we want within the wind data category: the direction of wind, intensity of wind, as well as the duration of wind, and the third type of that is the four characteristic of the area. That is four characteristic. So the other three three level information we want before planning the runway orientation. So what are that? Well, first of all, we want the map of the area and the vicinity of the airport to understand the topography of that area, or also to get the control levels of that area. Or that we want the map of that particular area. Now that's the second type of data what we want that is the wind data. This wind data includes the three types of data that is intense. That is first of all the direction of the wind, then we want the intensity of wind and then we want the duration of wind. So these three types of data are generally categorized within the wind data category. After that we want third is that is four characteristic. What is this direction? We generally just this is like north, south, <coughs> east, West, north, north, east, west, north, west, south, east, south, similar and east. Similarly, then we generally divide the direction into the 16 category using an, uh, using an angle of 22.5 degree. We divide the direction into the 16 categories that is north, south, east, west. Similarly, in the 16 categories by using an angle of 22.5 degree that we will learn in the subsequent. Uh, topic. So, like this, these are the direction we want. That we will, we want the direction uh, in the 16 way. Then we have the intensity. It is the intensity is nothing, uh, is nothing but the speed of the wind. Speed of the wind, which we generally measure in terms of kmph, which we generally measure in terms of kmph by the duration. This is the percentage time. This is the percentage time and area for which the wind is blowing in a particular direction. So that is the wind duration. Uh, in terms of percentage of time, we will represent this duration. So the other three types of data we want within the wind data category and last is fog characteristic. <coughs> so we will start moving further with this wind data. About this, we will learn about uh, different types of wind. As we have seen, the whatever three category we have at the wind data. Now we will learn different types of it. Those will act on the aircraft during the takeoff and landing operation on the aircraft. So here, 
three types of wind. One is the hand wind. Then we have a tail wind, and the last one that is third one. This is the second one. This is the first one. So three types of wind we have. One is the head wind, then tail wind, and the last one is the cross wind. So what is the head wind? This is the wind which is acting in the opposite direction of the nose or head of the air of the aircraft. That is known as the head wind. Right? <coughs> tail wind. This is the wind which is acting in the same direction as of during the landing and takeoff of the aircraft. That is the tail wind. Why right? this is cross wind? It is this is the wind which is acting at a certain angle from the direction of head wind. That is the cross wind. We try to understand it.
habit. As we are speaking here about the uh, cross-wind component that is recent data, we can say that this is the cross-wind component which is acting normal to this end of friend wave. This is a very critical parameter. We want this parameter measure to be as small as possible. We want this parameter to be as small as possible because we can see that it is acting at the norm, uh, normal to the center and displacement wave. So if this the amount of this component which is very high and this can result in the turning of the aircraft. So we want this V sin theta as small as possible. Here we have some of the, the standard values for this V sin theta component that this V sin theta should not crater uh, it, that means to say it should be always less than the 25 kmph. In case of the landing and takeoff of lightweight aircraft, in case of lightweight aircraft, this cross wind component should not exceed the limit of 25 kmph, otherwise, it will result in the turning of the aircraft. So, there are some, so therefore, the space antidote is a very critical the parameter which we need to satisfy in all these situations. over a certain period of time. 
that is the wind rose diagram. What it is? It is the diagram which gives the information about the wind direction, wind intensity, as well as about the wind duration of a specified blizzard over a specific period of time or over a certain period of time. That is nothing but the wind rose diagram. For preparing this wind rose diagram, we usually collect the data of 5 to 10 years of data is required. For preparing this type of wind rose diagram, it is necessary to collect 5 to 10 years of data and then we can prepare this wind rose diagram. For preparing this wind rose diagram, generally we consider the area in a circular way. We generally consider area in a circular way and we divide it into the 16 part. That means it will 16 radial direction using an angle of 22.5 degree. Using an angle of 16 in this, we divide into the 16 direction using an angle of 22.5 degree. That is what we are saying. Now how will we divide it? This is north, this is south, this is east, this is west, we will take, so we are thinking about the radial lines, so we divide it further, so this will be what, this will be nothing but the northeast, this will be southwest, this will be southeast, this will be northwest. So we will still divide it further. This one, 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 this one. So like this, if we will take the angle in between these two lines by joining this to the center, then this angle will be 22.5 degrees. So what we are saying in the ventral diagram, we are dividing the area into the 16 direction using an angle of 22.5 degrees. So as we are saying, this is the north, this is south. West, east, southeast, southwest, northwest, northeast. This will be called north, northeast. This will be north, northwest. This point will be south, southeast. This will be south, southwest. And how do you speak about this? This will be east, north, east. This will be east, south, east. This direction will be west, south, west, while this will be west, north, west. So like this, we divide the whole area into the 16 direction using an angle of 22.5 degree. That is what the windrose diagram. Within the windrose diagram also, we have the two types, or to say the windrose diagram can be classified into two categories, that is It can be classified into two categories, that is number one is the type one. Another is type two, windows diagram. So there are two types of windows diagram. One is windows diagram of type one, another is windows diagram of type two. The windows diagram speaks about remember D D that is direction and duration. It is speaks only about speaks about direction and vibration that is what the windows diagram windows diagram I combine the type 2 it speaks about the all three types of data that is you can remember D I D that means it speaks about direction then I dependent the intensity and the last one that is nothing but the duration So what is, as we are saying, windows diagram is classified into two categories, type 1 and type 2. The type 1 speaks about the direction as well as not duration, while the type 2 speaks about direction, intensity and duration. So they are two types. Right. So within the type 1, what, how we will prepare, as we have discussed that, we have to collect the data of IRB 5 to 10 years of data we will require, first of all, before starting or before making the windows diagram. How will you prepare? 
Finally, we will collect the data and we will make a table first of all for the direction. All the direction we have to write here north, 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 east, then north, east, then east, north, east. Similarly, you have east, south, east, then south, east, then south, south, east, then south. Similarly, south, south, west. Similarly, all the 16 directions we have to take here. As we have discussed, how to divide into 16 parts. And as we have seen, uh, what we, uh, to be said in direction, we have to uh, give uh, what, what name has to be given for the radial direction. Accordingly, we have to write all the uh, 16 directions here. Here we have to write the percentage for division of time or duration of time. It will be divided according to the speeds. That is process if it takes x to 25 kmph. Then it can take 25 to 50. KMPS and last one is 50 to 80 or greater than 50. Then you have to find out total coverage or total percentage of time. Total percentage of wind coverage. So like this. Here the data will be given like we can say that the 4%, 4.3 or the 2% similarly, 2, 2.1, 1.3, 3%, 2.6%, 2.1%, similarly blah blah blah. The data will be given to us. Similarly, this is what the data means. The 4% is of a time in a year the wind was blowing in between 6 to 25 pixels. That means it uh, was like that means 4% of, of, of time in a year the rate was by at an density of 625 kmph in the direction of north. Similarly, for this much percent of time the rate was by at an density of between 25 to 50 kmph in the direction of north. Similarly, this is what the rate is given. What we have to do, we have to take the submission of here, that is total percentage of wind coverage. That means the total percentage of time in which the wind was by in the direction of north. That we can get by taking the submission of these three. So we will take the summation of this 3, what it will be? 4 plus 2, 6, 6 plus 4, 10, 10.3. That means for 10.3 percent of time, in a year the wind was blowing in the direction of north. Out of this, 4 percent of time it was blowing at an intensity of 6 to 25 kmph. Out of that, 4.3 percent of time it was blowing at an intensity of 25 to 50 kmph. Out of that, 2% of the time, it was blowing with an intensity of 50 to 80 km. That means, that is what the meaning of this. Similarly, we will get out of this. And at last, we have to take the submission of each the column. For each column also. So, it will give you the wind coverage, which is having an intensity in between 6 to 25 km. So, this will be the normal wind coverage. Something like this. Then 
here we have the percentage of time in the north direction we have 10.3 so in the, uh, we will mark here 10.3 or rather than doing this we can also draw the constant circle the, the diameter of those for uh, the radius of those counter concentric circles which represents the the duration of time so similarly here we can draw circle this representing the duration of state similarly is representing this radius of this concentric circle is representing the duration of 10 years similar of 10 percent of 10 percent of time in a year in the north direction we can see from here for the 10 percent 10.3 percent of time the wind is blowing in the north direction from here this is the 10 hours or this is 10 percent somewhere it will be 10.3 similarly we have, we have to do the calculation for each and every direction suppose for north north east here we have somewhere 8.3 this is the point Somewhere for north east we have exactly 10 percent. Point two somewhere here. For then this east north east somewhere point somewhere the percentage of time in a year was six percent. And this will be six percent. For the east let it be eight hours. This will be point nine. So still uh, in the similar way we have to plot all the points here. Then by joining these points we can get the Winthrop's diagram of icon. Similarly we have to join these points by a straight line. Something like this, we get the windows right on them. A line which gives the, the longest line will give you the direction of runway. After doing this windows right now, the line which will give you uh, the longest line will give the runway direction. So, similarly, in this way, we get the, we prepare the windows right now of type 4. There is some of the difference in the type 2 that is. There are some other difference in the type 2 that is the first of all it is speaks about all the three data that is direction and then intensity and then the duration so it is speaks that is the windows diagram of type 2 it is speaks about all the three data while the type 1 speaks about the two only that is direction and the division. This is what the type 1. The type 1 speaks about only two, that is the direction as well as duration. Why? Right? The type 2 speaks about all the three, that is direction, intensity, and duration. The second three. In this, the concentric circle was representing the duration. In the type 1, the concentric circle represents the duration. Why? Right? In case of type 2, the concentric circle. It represents the intensity of wind. It represents the intensity of wind. Second thing, in the type one, we have seen that the radial line was joining directly the direction. Was joining directly the direction. While in case of type two, the radial line joins the center of direction. Joins the center of direction means. Suppose this is the east, this is your north, this is the northeast, so this will be the east, north, east. In case of type 1, the line was joining directly the direction or the radial line was joining directly the direction. While in case of the type 2, these radial lines join the center of direction. That means it will join, this is the center of this direction, it will join this. This direction will be what? North, north, east. So rather than joining this, again it will join the center of this direction. So like this, so these are the directions. What what's happening in this type two? The radial lines are joining the center of the directions. Here also it will be divided into the 16 direction using an angle of 22.5 degree angle. After that. So as we have drawn the concentric circle here, it is representing the we are representing the direction. The concentric circles are representing the intensity. This is the direction. It is representing the intensity. 
then we have to write the duration. In between these cells, we have to write the duration for which the wind is blowing in that particular direction. After doing all these things, we have to keep a template or we have to use a template board. After preparing the windows line of type 2, we have to take a, we have to make a template board. The weight of the template board will be two times of the wind uh, two times the uh, wind uh, two times the wind cover uh, two times the wind com uh, wind coverage component. This will be a wind coverage component that is 25 kVh. The diameter of this will be two times of wind coverage component that is the uh, template board as well as the length of this template board will be slightly higher than the diameter of the wind coast diagram. This will be rotated in the east direction or to say we have to superimpose in east direction the direction which will give the maximum duration of time that along that direction the runway will be oriented using this type 2 window diagram. So like this, the other two types of window diagram that is type 1 and type 2 and on the list and in the similar in this way we generally find out the direction in which the other runway can be oriented. So this is all about the window diagram. Thank you.